is a painful story to give. Yeah. Very painful. Of course. Watching your 11 people dead, you were with them a minute ago, and there you are giving the story. You are singing and dancing. Yes, singing and dancing, eating. I remember before it all happened, my sisters were so extremely happy that day. For whatever reason, maybe God had just mm. spoken to them. <laughs> it looked like a farewell to me, yeah. even for the viewers who've watched the story. Mm. It was like a farewell party. But the worst thing I saw that gave me a lot of energy now to cross a river. was my niece mm. holding a dead child. Na bintu aruzi kwa mubea alavu sisi yaba mamba kupikiria watoto wangu mengia kwa kwa mai. Lakini naona watu kureka reka na muna hii uwe mama kuhuliza hii sasa ni kitu kani. Sasa tumamaliza aruzi tuneambewa Toto mengi yam kwama kwa maji. Asa tunaondoa kamba kwa uko. Na ndo kuta wote una mengi yama kwa maji. Hello and uh, good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Tales of Wanjiku and I'm coming to you right here from River Enzu and if you guys remember this river uh, claimed the lives of 33 people almost four weeks ago and today my guest her family they lost 11 people. When she wrote to me and said that she is ready to share uh, the story I have to admit personally I don't think I was ready. Uh, because you guys, you know how traumatizing those events were and to have lost so many people at one single day is still super traumatizing to me. But I have to commend her and her family for being so brave. And even guys, as we watch this episode, I would want us to ask ourselves, what can we do so that we are able to come through for this family? We don't always do this, but we will have now the contact details and the pay bill number because I understand there are nine kids who could desperate who desperately uh, need our help huh? so even as you watch and you feel like you want to touch the life of one kid take them through school give them a scholarship you know i know we can do this yeah i know we genuinely can come together we can come together so we are about to head to her home right now and get to talk to the dad and the mom the dad was so excited to renew his vows to his wife but as you guys saw it did not happen. So how are they coping as a family and how best can we come through for them as Kenyans? So, Twende Kazi Sawa, all right. Hi. Hi. How are you? Who is this? Nani, who are you? Uh, hi, Lynn. Hi. Um, welcome to our home. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I'm very grateful for you to make time to come and uh, visit us, uh -huh. uh, especially my parents, yeah. and uh, to get to know our story. Uh -huh. <laughs> so my name is Juliet Mongeli Mutua. I schooled here. Uh, this is where I, I was from childhood. I went to school just uh, nearby. Mambo! No over? And um, 
went through all the way to class eight. I went to secondary school, and uh, thereafter I joined university. Mm. Uh, started working, yeah, struggling with life, hustling, and uh, eventually I got a job out of the country mm -hmm. just recently mm -hmm. and tried to just support my parents uh, the best way I could. Yeah. Yes, and my sisters were just like my backbone, um, taking care of the family when I'm away, uh, looking after their own children, mm. my parents as well. Mm. And this is how we came up with a plan mm. that, you know, we need to bless our parents. They also wanted to bless us mm. uh, because uh, they struggled throughout our lives. Yeah. We are seven of us in our family, mm -hmm. uh, five girls and two brothers. Mm -hmm. Uh, although we also have other children whom my mom and dad raised yeah. uh, out of their good heart, mm. um, I can say wow. in quotes, orphans. In this home, we were raised so many of us. It's not like because they were able, but they struggled just to make sure every child gets a good they portion. They have a heart for it. Yeah, they do. Uh, my mom was a business, a business lady, uh, cooking food in the market. Uh, my dad looking after the homestead, uh, taking care of the cows, yeah. farming. Yeah and just to make sure that we get the best in life. Mm -hmm. And out of all that struggle, uh, anytime we want to celebrate their life, whatever they ask for, we give them. And when my father said, you know, um, after the struggle he had uh, with sickness for enough time, he would like to give my mom a gift, mm -hmm. which is a vow in church uh, with the wedding. Mm -hmm. We said, why not? and we started planning for the wedding. Were you excited? Oh, I was really excited, Lynn, I must say, uh, because this wedding was actually planned within a month. Uh, we left Nairobi on the 4th um, of December at uh, 3 a.m. That is how excited people were. Even the small babies, my nieces, you know. And I remember how I was calling everybody three in the morning. Uh, guys, sure. come on, have you woken up? Everybody yes. ready? Let's go. And we, we had two private cars from Nairobi because the main transport was in Wingy Town, mm -hmm. where my sisters lived. Mm -hmm. um, we had a, a, a school bus, a St. Joseph's a Seminary School, a 52-seater. Uh, so that everybody who wants to come for this wedding, can fit. you know, our friends, everybody can fit. So we proceeded, go to the river uh, and see you. Uh, it was flooded and we had fun. You know, we just had fun. It's interesting how we had just, you know, we just had a lot of fun. Nobody thought about we're getting late or, you know, okay. it's a hard life to be beside the river. Kids are not even crying for food. It was just so much fun. So Lynn, this mm -hmm. is a place, this is the river NCU. Yeah. Of course, you know this is Kitui County, yeah. Mwingi. Uh, I come from this side of uh, Mwingi. Mm -hmm. uh, but before you get home, you have to cross this river. There's no other route. Yeah. And uh, so coming down here, uh, the, the river was flooded. Mm -hmm. As usual, it happens every rainy season. Yeah. And after some time, you know, uh, we were here for around four hours mm -hmm. waiting. Mm -hmm. But then we felt like, you know, some three buses have crossed the river. Why not us? Yeah. And the parents are waiting at home for the wedding. Mm -hmm. So before, before the crossing, my sisters were just dancing and singing across the other side of the there? river. Yeah. Over that side. Yeah. Right now it looks better because I think after the incident, yeah. there was some work that was done in the beginning, just a far end. Like over there. They're over there. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. Personally, with my nieces and my the small babies, mm. we were dancing somewhere by the bush yeah. because they are young people. They wouldn't want other people to see them dance mm -hmm. just to get ready for their grandma's wedding. Yeah. And when we all finished dancing, uh, now we saw the three buses cross, and uh, you know that bit of oh, we're getting late for the wedding. Yes. Now it's time to cross. Mm -hmm. Other people are crossing. Why not? Why not us? Why not us? And uh, uh, luckily the school driver said, yeah, it's okay, we can now try to, to cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just uh, drove uh, the bus mm. 
nearer to the edge where you can see the car approaching. Yes. But just the beginning of the bridge, mm. it is a bridge, as they say. Yeah. Um, and they just waited there for everybody to get on. Mm. I was in another car across yeah. um, because everybody had their own small cars. Yes. Uh, and that is where all my luggage was. And uh, so my sister said, uh, it's time to go, everybody get ready. We can leave the cars across the river. Mm. And uh, when we finish the wedding, you all we, come we all come back here. Yeah. And it was a good, you know, yeah. a good plan because nobody wanted to miss. Um, so in the process of me getting my stuff uh, from my car, mm -hmm. uh, I came back to the bus and said, oh, I have to rush back to get my mask. Uh, because I knew village people normally don't wear masks yes. and I wanted them to be very safe in my mom's wedding. Mm -hmm. So I rushed back to get the masks from the car and then I came back running. Yeah. Then I just realized the bus is starting to move and I was just pr approaching. Mm. So I stood like transfixed thinking they're just teasing me. Yeah. Then I realized, oops, they're actually moving on. And uh, within a flash of a second, things had just happened. Yeah. So I saw the bus just um, uh, slowly, um, uh, you know, overturning, trying, the driver maybe trying to over, over there, there now. yes, yeah. trying to maybe to control, yeah. but he was unable to. Mm -hmm. It's like a horror movie. You don't want to watch that. My entire family was there because even for them, they thought I'm inside. Because the bus is big enough, it's 52 yeah. seater. Yeah. So they wouldn't know who is on, who is not. Who is not. Uh, I watched everything. I remember I threw my stuff away and I was wailing and other people were... Mm, mm, at some mm. point people got confused of what to do because yes. it was just horrible to yeah. watch that. Yeah. And the last bit that I remember of myself is kneeling down across a bridge praying. And I saw other people surrounding me also praying with me. And trust me, God listens to prayers. It was after that prayer I saw some people being rescued. Yeah, the guys. The guys now were so strongly swimming across and, mm. you know, getting people. I could see some people are dead. Yeah. But remember, it's across a river. Yeah. Somewhat, I wouldn't tell who is dead. But the life ones, I would tell that is so and so. Mm. And the small babies were, a few of them, about five, were rescued alive. Dead, dead. Well, can I, can I, can I? And um, although rescued, yes, but you can imagine, deep in the water. Deep in the water. So they were being, you know, uh, yeah. what do you call it? Like, um, to help them to get out yeah. the water mm -hmm. from their tummies. Mm. And they were rushed to the nearest hospital for mm. first aid. Yeah. But the worst thing I saw that gave me a lot of energy now to cross a river <laughs> was my niece <laughs> holding a dead child. How old was she? The baby was five. Yeah. She's so pretty. Yeah. I had a good time with them across the river. Yeah. And when I saw her seated here, just, you know, holding holding the baby, but I could see the baby's not normal. I got a lot of energy. And looking across, I could now see other bodies just, you know, they were so quick, the divers, God bless them. Yeah. They were so quick to pick them. So many people here, Lynn. Here. Over here. Right here. This is why I came here, because I feel like I'm connecting with them. Yeah. Is this the first time you're coming back here? Yeah. Because right after there was a lot of issues, mm. you know, mortuary transfer the bodies to different locations mm -hmm. because we in general mortuary doesn't have a freeze, yeah. a freezer rather, yeah. and we had to move the bodies. It was terrible. Yeah. I I saw them. Some of them were not covered, but I know all of them. They are my sisters or my nieces or my grandchildren because yeah. they are my nieces' children. Yeah. 
I rushed to the nearest town you've seen, the, uh, yes. Guni town, yeah. to buy the fabrics, mm. the lessons. Mm. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there were security guys who were, had already arrived, but yeah. doing nothing really, apart from controlling now the divers from rescuing more people. They had stopped everything. I had to plead with one of them, still pushing me away, yeah. and they could see how devastated I was, mm -hmm. to allow me to cross over. I had to show them these are lessons, I need to go and cover my people, I can't see them. Oh. Thanks to one of the divers, very small bodied but yeah. very strong and he promised me just hold on to me, yeah. have faith in me, I'm mm -hmm. not going to drop you mm -hmm. and I came here. Yeah. So the whole time I was here, everybody comes, I check, oh who is this, so and so, all my people, mm -hmm. okay, you cover them. Even now I have one of the lessons that, uh, I don't know who gave it back to me but mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I got it. Mm -hmm. So I covered all of them. This is a painful story to give. Yeah. Very painful. Of course. Watching your 11 people dead, you are with them a minute ago, and there you are giving the story. You are singing and dancing. Yes, singing and dancing, eating. I remember before it all happened, my sisters were so extremely happy that day. For whatever reason, maybe God had just mm. spoken to them. <laughs> it looked like a farewell to me, yeah. even for the viewers who've watched the story. Mm. It was like a farewell party. Everybody was so happy. People were dancing. I remember there was one guy who was selling uh, boiled eggs. I think we ate all his eggs. Yeah. It was like a party. They ate everything that came across mm -hmm. without even questioning. Yeah eggs, mangoes, anything that came across, mm -hmm. and the dancing, and you know, you could see the happiness. Yes. <sighs> I didn't know that it was a farewell to me. Mm. And what pains me most is because this is something that would have been controlled, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at this bridge, yeah. it's been here for ages like that, mm -hmm. and every rainy season takes people's lives away. It does. And everybody knows it does. It's just that this time round, it's never been like this. Yeah, but it does. It does. Every rainy season, mm -hmm. everybody knows. Even the government knows. It takes people away. For ever since I was a small girl, I know that. Ever since. Ever since I was a small girl. So this it's not a was lie. very much preventable. Yes, very much. If you look at that um, beacon, mm. it shows some work was going on. Yeah. But then I don't know what happened. It stopped. They gave up halfway. However they did it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But even though it's still not done, what if the government knows this is a rainy season, the river is flooded, yes. and just set a barrier to just protect people from using the river? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So this is something I know I wouldn't have lost that much, that many people. Yeah. If the government took their duty to protect their people, mm -hmm. this is something that would have been avoided. Exactly. It would have been avoided. Look take. at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It has taken you a lot to come back. It here. has taken me enough time to even gain the strength to get out of the house. Forget about even coming to this river. I've been locked in the house for the last one week. I just planned for the burials. And when I finished the last one on Wednesday, 21st, I just got myself in the room until you, you called me and we talked about it and you know everybody thinks you're strong you're dealing with this because i've been swimming in the shadows shadows of the death mm -hmm. since then how many people have you buried 11 11 within a span of one week sometimes we would bury two people in a day because we knew christmas is approaching and their bodies were not well kept at Mwingi General Hospital before we moved them. Mm -hmm. So we had to really hurry up to make sure they don't yeah. deteriorate. Yeah. yeah. What's keeping you going right now? It's the fact that I know I'm the only one standing. Hmm. Hmm. And the fact that my sisters left me with their kids by the river. They left me here with them, the ones who were rescued. I got sick, actually, if you look at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big wound. 
Mm. I went to the hospital, I was told this infection from the dirty water from mm. the river. Mm. And it's not been easy for me. Yeah. But when I know where they left me. By the river. By the river with, with their, their kids, kids. And they are gone. If I don't stand strong for them, who will? How many kids do we have? We have about nine kids. Nine. Yeah. We are talking of nine kids. And I'm not counting, you know, the, the older ones. I'm thinking of the small kids still in PPU. Two going up to secondary school. Yeah. yeah. Nine kids. Sometimes when I went home for logistics is planning for the barrier, they mm. wouldn't believe that I'm alive. They would peep through the, you know, through the fence yes. and ask, is she the one? You know, just trying to check, is she alive? Like, is she the one, you know? And they would come running and yeah. just, you know. Yeah. And I remember one of the babies who, when I was leaving home, she was really, really uh, crying. And she, I asked her, Mama, why are you crying? She said, you need to hold very firmly onto that bus. I don't want yeah. you to fall because I want to see you again. Yeah. So the belief they have is like, if you go, you'll never come back. Mm. Because mm. they know their mom's dead. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right here where we are. Mm. This is a point where they were. Wow. And I got used to it because at the end of the day, um, they still had to carry them and uh, cross a river again. Mm. Mm. And from that time now, the life had started for me. Yeah. How will you remember them? Wow. That's a big question. Mm -hmm. How do you want to remember them? These people, you know, mo all of them are my moms. They raised me. It's not easy to forget them. Um, from the time I was, I was uh, let's say, from secondary school, that's when they all got jobs, mm -hmm. like my sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at some of the, my nieces, we're almost the same age. Um, they took me as their own firstborn child and they raised me, mm -hmm. they educated me um, because, you know, I had my fair portion of my childhood, yeah. but not that strong. So when they were all a bit able, they picked me up and raised me. And this is why I am who I am today. Yeah. Wow. So I'm just picking the same responsibility yeah. that they gave me. They yeah. took up for me. Um, very strong people, leaders. Strong, strong, strong people. people. Lead. Yeah. They protected the family, mm -hmm. looked after my parents. I never appeared anywhere. I was like a baby. Oh, you are like a baby. I was so protected. And mm. I'm now out here like I'm the strongest in the whole family. Mm. Not because I am but because they left me the responsibility right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Right here. So if I fail, I fail them. You are, you are, you are strong and you are now to be soft and brave at the same time, you know. You yeah. know. And I'm glad you are here, you know. Yeah, you are thinking of changing the route, maybe mm. never to pass here. Okay. But it is the only shortest way to go home. This is the, the shortest other route way. to go home, you yeah. really have to go a long, long way just to avoid the river. But we have to pray and we have to push that something has to be done yes. on this river. On this river. Because we are not the only people who use this route. So we have seen so many people, yeah. so many cars mm -hmm. still using this yes, route. Yes, it's the only route. You can't change it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So maybe my people's mm. death were the game changer, probably. Mm. If so, and it then let it be. It shouldn't have been. No yeah. one has to die to change any game, you know? I just hope something will be done. Yeah. The happiest day for me will be the day I'll come here. And I'm not worried. It doesn't have to be my people. I'm not worried of somebody losing their life here. Yeah. Because I saw and I know and I feel the pain of losing someone, not because they're sick, but because of negligence by those people who would have protected them better. Yeah. yeah. What conversations are you having with God right now? First of all, to touch the leaders, to give what they promise, 
because that's exactly what I'm saying. And to lead us Kenyans to choose our leaders wisely. Yeah. And for God to give us the right leader, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Give me the wisdom and the courage and provide for those kids yeah. who are left. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day, one day, one day, yeah. they will stand here and do something major, especially mm. for the divers mm. in Enzu mm. River. Because mm. those guys are amazing. I'm yeah. just praying to God to bless them. The divers, yeah. amazing people. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. amazing. Th those guys, if they were not here, mm -hmm. would have lost every soul in this river. Wow. Every soul, and there were about more than 60 people. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, because yeah. after they stopped uh, the rescue process, mm -hmm. that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Everybody else. <laughs> yes. Until the next day. <laughs> So I, I don't know who broke the, the news to my parents, and they all came to the river. Aye. Sadly, whoever did it, sometimes people need to be very sensitive. <laughs> I think my mom was told, all your children are dead. All of them. So when she arrived there and saw me, she Aye. sort of didn't believe that it was me. And remember, she hadn't seen me for a whole year. Mm. So I just told her to be strong. I told her, at least I'm alive. We would have been all down there. At least you have one you can count on to. Okay. Plus the little babies who came home. Mm. At least you have, you're holding on to something. Mm. You know? So what I did, uh, my mom insisted I have to show her. Yeah. Everybody. Okay. And I was not sure because I didn't want her to collapse and also die. You know, she's aged. Eh? I was like, if she dies now, what will I be left with? But she said she'll be strong. If only she can see them and wipe them and clean them. Kai. Okay. She'll be strong. And that's what she did. One by one. One by one. She fetched water from the scooped water from yeah. the river and washed her faces. At least she witnessed. Yeah. Does dad blame himself or mom? How are they? No, one thing that dad said is that he cannot blame himself for setting the wedding. He's not the reason why that happened. Mm -hmm. He was only a reason for happiness. He set a date where all those people imagine would have come to celebrate yes. life. And he doesn't regret at it all. It was not. It was not his fault. His fault was happiness, mm. just trying to make, a, you know, an occasion where many people can come and celebrate, mm. have fun, mm. you know, dance with the kids, yeah. give people strength, give people a reason, yeah. you know, encourage young people that mm. this, this marriage, because most of works. us now, they don't believe that mm. marriage can work. He was there waiting to talk to all those people through seeing his experience and marrying my mom at this age. It was just a life changer whereby mm. people would believe in marriage, mm. that it can work only if you stay together well, you know, you swallow each other's weaknesses, mm. that marriage really works. Yeah. We went through so much that week. Mm. So we identified the people from the river, just to take you back, I was told um, Everybody who has their people here, you yeah. go to the Minky uh, mortuary tomorrow morning because there's no fridge. Mm. You take your people, take them to the better places because it's not a, pri uh, it's not a proper place for people by, who died by drowning. Mm. They need to be in a, in a fridge. Mm. And I said, it's fine. Because where else would I take them anyway? Yeah. I can't yeah. take them to the house. Yeah. So I thought that following morning on Sunday, mm. we would transfer them to a better place easily. following the instructions we got from the river mm. easily. But then by Sunday, things got different. They were told they need DNA to be taken, and the babies, because they can't take fingerprints, they need um, DNA, DNA test, which takes about two weeks. We were just there. Just, like, mortuary was my home. I was just seated there throughout the day, but I felt like we were together. Mm -hmm. You know, no mm -hmm. food, no water. You just sit there. 
you know, you want to view them, you go and view them and come out. Yeah. That was a daily mm, routine. routine. So, by when by Tuesday night is when I got a text message to say uh, the fingerprints are out. Yeah. So Wednesday, go for your people, go and check on them. So when I got there, um, was it on Tuesday before the mass? Yeah. When I got there, um, we were told uh, you have to wait. Well, there the whole day, a whole day from morning. And uh, the first thing we did is actually to go back and identify them again in the morning. Those guys were swollen. You couldn't identify them. I remember like one of my sisters, mm -hmm. I had to look at, the, at her feet for me to know who she was. She had completely changed. They were swollen, you know. They, w they were not in good condition. Mm -hmm. The place was smelling. But I still walked in there like they are still my people, you know. They are your people. I don't care. I went and said, yes, yes, this is my person. I can see the name, but they've already changed completely. You can't tell who they are. I could just say, let me just look at the feet, and because I know them very well. Mm. We're raised together here, mm. so mm. I know all of them. Mm. By evening, around five, uh, we were promised to be given also the babies because how can you take the mother and leave the child? Mm. So they said it's okay, it's been organized, you can also take the babies. And all of a sudden the story changed. And they said you can't take the babies as well. So that one we had to make noise. And they eventually allowed us to take them mm. along with the babies. And mm. that's around, uh, we were leaving Wingy around 9 p.m. We had to go to Nairobi, to KU, you know to transfer them, mm. no sleeping, mm. but I was feeling so strong. The whole week I was not sleeping. I had changed my sleeping patterns to be 2.30 two in the morning, because that is the time I would come back home. Mm. So we took them to KU, and now the drama started now arranging the burial, because these bodies were not in good condition, they wouldn't stay long. We are approaching Christmas time, everybody wants to go home mm. and you know. Yeah. So we had to really organize for the burial within one week mm. for all those families. Mm. Some of the families would do like two burials in a day. So that because there are 11 of them. Others would do one today, the next tomorrow. And there are diverse places, you have to travel from mm. one place to, to the, other. the other. And this is where we couldn't sleep. Mm. Um, so we managed to do that, a lot of expenses. In card, of course, you can imagine who, who paid the expenses, you uh, guys or the county government. We got uh, fifty thousand for for each uh, person mm -hmm. from the disaster management office. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was in handy because it really, really supported yeah. us. There was a harambe that uh, uh, happened mm -hmm. uh, for the whole parish, mm -hmm. for all people, mm -hmm. uh, which was sitting in the committee. Mm -hmm. Um, it was decided on how much money to be given per person, but as we speak, even up to now, I'm still following up on some. So not everybody got that money to mm. assist in the mm. burial mm. program. Mm. So at least that one, you cannot count it in yeah. the burial. Yeah. So the only money that helped, which I really appreciate the effort, was the 50,000 per person from, disaster from management. the disaster management office, mm. you see. Um, which I think is what the governor uh, promised mm. uh, during the, the mortuary time. Mm. She had promised she would make sure every family will get uh, caskets for their people. So I believe that is the money that she promised. Mm. Uh, I must confess that we got the 50,000 mm. for mm. each person, each, um, mm. each body. Mm. Yeah. Apart from that, remember burial is very expensive. Yes. It's very costly. Mm. Having to bury like three people in a go, you're buying caskets, you know. The logistics. Logistics, traveling, food, and, the and everything. Part of emotional it. part of it. You are all over the place. Mm. You're throwing yourself in it because you want to give them the best, mm. even though it's not in your position mm. to. So yeah, a lot of a lot of effort was done. The family uh, united together. You know, well wishers came through for mm. us. So we managed to bury mm. everybody. I mean, all the all the the, the bodies mm -hmm. uh, rested in peace. May the Lord bless their souls. But now the story is, what next? What next? What next? So how the kids ran to you? 
do they wow. even know? Some of them know. Yeah. Others don't know. Anytime they see you coming from the town, they think mom is coming for Christmas. Mm. That's why you could ask hear one of them asking, mom? how come mom is not coming? What do you tell them? Others saw their mom's dead, they already know. So even if you try to tell them otherwise, they know. I will never see, like the, one of the babies just saying, don't lie to me. I know I will never see my mom and my brother and my grandma again. I know they died. Every member of your family is very important. Don't dismiss anybody. Whether they have money Whether they or have not. money or finance or not, every person is very important. You get to know their worth when they leave. We feel the strength of our people now that they're not there. Hmm. Hmm. We feel. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. What's keeping you going half of the time? Wow. Good question. Uh, the first thing I would say is uh, strength from the Lord. Okay, I pray. Mm. I'm also getting the strength, I think, would I say from my sisters and their, their spirit is still following me. Mm. Because I believe when they left me by the river with their kids, what was that message? Take care. Take care of them. So I'm never that strong, but lately I've been very strong, very strong and making very solid decisions mm -hmm. because I'm doing it for them. I was with them, Lynn. What makes me so special? Why do you think God left me out of all of them? Because none of them was stable that was left. It's only the babies, apart from now, myself. All the strong people, they were all gone. So that gives me a lot of strength. Mm. And I have to fight for them. Yeah. In my smallest ways possible. And mm. this is where I had my strength to reach out to yeah. you. Because yeah. I know through you, these kids can get support. They will get. Psychologically, you know, mm. their education, education, their life. Their yes. life is not ending today. And I cannot carry all of them on my shoulders. You I cannot. also have a life to live. You cannot. It can only be a Kenyan thing, yes. a world thing, yeah. just somebody somewhere to be touched a community. and, you know, community. It's a community yeah. effort right now. Yeah, because mm. you never know whom these kids will be mm. tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. want to talk to mom and dad, but yeah. before I do that, don't mm. be shy about it. Yeah. If you can look at that camera. Mm. Oh, thank you. I know we are surrounded. This show is always watched by people who are ready to lend a hand. Yeah. Not even financially, even emotionally. But if you can just look at that camera mm -hmm. and give a parting shot before I talk to dad and mom Kidok, mm -hmm. what would be your last words or what would be your parting shot to our audience? Um, this is what I want to say to everybody watching this show. Um, it's a very important show. Um, first of all, it's just to give you uh, encouragement that things happen um, for a good reason. Nobody wishes death for their own people, but this happened and you cannot reverse it. Um, you can already see there are so many kids left here, myself also dealing with psychological torture. If there's anybody there out there who would give uh, free counseling, I'd be very happy to link them with the babies, just to assist them to heal, to go through the process. Even the family members, myself, that would be really, really helpful. We also have children here in school who need support in terms of their education. Um, if anybody out there, a well-wisher would be, you know, in a position to just give scholarship to some of these kids, or maybe to all of them, or maybe jobs to those who in the families would support the kids and just try to lessen <coughs> the duties of raising them, I, I would really, really appreciate. And um, 
that will go a long way and God will bless God will bless you for that. Yeah. But I would like also to appreciate my my employer. Yeah. Um you know Lynn sometimes when you get permission to go home for home for, for four days or whatever days yeah. you get, not many employers would understand you. Oh. But when this happened, I remember um a voice came through to me and said, You need to email your office because there's no way you're going to go back tomorrow. And that's what I did by the river. Mm. I emailed. Hi. It was on a weekend. Nobody works over the weekend. But when I emailed, the director emailed back quickly and asked for my Kenyan line. And he called me. I don't know how he got the information. Maybe he went through Twitter or whatever. He asked me, is that you? Is this what is happening at this place, in this yeah. place right now? Yeah. He said, Juliet, do whatever you can to protect your people. We are behind you. Wow. We will protect you. Oh. And they kept checking on me. What do you want us to do? Yeah. Remember, my son was not here with me. Yeah. How they organized for my son to come, come back home, home, I don't know up to now. Okay. They paid for his flight. They organized for him to come back. They wrote for me beautiful messages of encouragement from work. Wow. May the Lord bless them. Yeah. And may he bless you too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I cannot even right now start to imagine I know the pain that you're going through, but I know God linked us for a reason. Yeah. And I just promit to you, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. deeply sorry. And I hope someday, just someday, you will, you will smile, mm. you know. And I can tell you had amazing siblings. See us come into your home, see this beautiful house you built for your dad and mom. How happy your mom is trying to be, even though I know I can't even see her from here. She's breaking apart. I don't know, Juliet, but I know people connect for a reason and yeah. you are in this show for a reason. And I can only hope that the goodness and the wonders of God will showcase themselves. Mm -hmm. That you can look back and be like, you know, I shared my story and there's a reason for it. And I love my people and I know they will come through. And I know this was not even a call for help or anything. But for you being brave and there's a reason why life or God trusted you with those kids. There's a reason you are still here alive. There's a reason. If there's one thing you can take away from this, just know there's a reason you are still here. There's a reason you went back to take the mask. There's a reason you are, the kids ran to you the way they did when we got here. There's a reason for it. I don't know. I'm not the best with these things. I don't even know half of the pain that you are feeling right now. But I do know. God has not mm. forgotten you and he will never and he will never so take heart yeah. it's not easy because I can see you are all there is right now you are the one trying to keep people together keep your family together mm -hmm. you just had a break that you are still stabilizing but eventually things will work out yeah. Sasa dad, we mbona uliko nataka kufanya harusi na mama? Eh, yeah, nataka kufanya harusi na mama. Mm. Kwa maana mm. uh, na magazi kwa mingi. Kwa mingi tunaolewa na wewe na tunaanza kwa kanisa. Mm. Alafu tunaona alafu tupindue harusi. Mm -hmm. Eh. Yeah. Mm. Kwa wa Kristo. Mm. Eh. Yeah. Baada ya, ya, ya kufa mm. mtu asipo na the Christo. Ndio? Ni kweli. Ile mambo yenye imetokea kwanza pole sana kwa yale mambo yote imetokea. Ni mambo yote ni yangu na bibi yangu. Mhm. Watoto wangu natengeneza ruzi ya yangu. Na si mbaya. Si mambo ya Mungu. Mhm. Mhm. Kama hiyo vitu yote ni yangu na na bibi yangu. Mhm. Mhm. Oh. Lakini tunabindua ruzi. Mm. Tunabindua ruzi kwa mbea. Alavu, 
sisi ya mamba kufikiria wa, wa, watoto wangu mengia kwa, kwa mai. Lakini naona watu kureka reka na muna hii, uwe mama kuleza hii, sasa ni kitu kani. Sasa tumamaliza arozi, tuneambewa watoto mengia kwa, ma, kwa mai. Sasa tunaondoka mpaka huko. Tunaenda ukuta wote unemingia ma, kwa mai. Kwa mamakuwa zaazawa na mtoto mingini wana, unatua watoto, hili watoto wato kwa wana hapa. Mwetuwa kwa maji. Ni hii mjamaa na hitu wa mudhami. Mm. Kwa mpondani. Mm. Na hii watoto honzi kukua kwa, kwa maji. Na ukolewa wote. Mm. Ni hii mudhami. Mm. Sasa tunayo na mazidi wa watoto wetu, mafariki, mm. na watu wengine. Mm. Wote ni watu wa mutua. Kwa maano mmekuja kwa? Kwa kwa. Mm. Eh. Mm. Si wangu? Mm. Hiyo ni mambo ya mungu. Mm. Mm. Ni mambo ya mungu. Mm. Ni hali ya mungu na hmm. asante ni sana kwa kutukaribisha huku nyumbani. Ha. Na Juliet, thank you for allowing us even to have a moment with your parents and to everyone who is watching back at home. I know definitely this is not the easiest story to watch. It's also not the easiest story even for me as an individual to cover. But again... I will not even shy away from appealing on behalf of this family. If there is any way that you can come through for them, we are in need of therapists, we are in need of, you know, psychologists, you know, that emotional support is so important, even to the parents, as you can see, and also the kids. And uh, if you can also grant them that pro bono, we would highly appreciate. And also if you can come through for these kids, offer them scholarships, whatever help it is that you think you can grant this family. Let's walk with them. Atao wengine wenye walipoteza maisha, wenye wayuko kwa hii familia. If there is a person you can hold their hand, please hold their hand and come through for this family. I know with this video, all of you who are watching, if you decide right now to even financially support them through that pay bill number that's there, we are able to make their life a bit, you know, a bit softer, a bit, you know, lessen the burden that this family is carrying. So whichever help you feel like you want to offer them, guys, all the contact details have been right there on the screen. The pay bill is the one right there on the screen. Also, if you want to share your story with me, my email is right there on the screen send a well detailed brief of your story and we could be visiting your family next my biggest joy will be to bring you guys a follow-up and say we have found scholarships for all of these kids that are in this home my biggest joy will be like at when you are you know, when they are not after jobs, attachment, internship, that will be my biggest joy, honestly, to bring you guys a follow-up in Yenajua to may impact life yao. Treasure everyone that's around you. You never know. You honestly never know if you're spending the last second with them. Treasure them. And also to my amazing team, Edu, Dave, uh, Chebet. Thank you guys for everything that you do. Uh, to make sure that you know these episodes to Mezi film they also go through a lot behind the scenes huh? so thank you guys for doing this job so religiously may god also bless you na thank you for even doing this so passionately i don't take your support for granted and to you that's watching asante sana let's come through for this family because i know we have a follow-up to do and i know it's going to be impactful my name is lynn googie thank you so much for watching Thank you.